Hey everyone, today I'm going to be building and painting this uh, artillery piece. Um, I found the uh, 3D file for this uh, artillery on Thingiverse, I believe, for free. Uh, I printed it on an Elegoo Mars 2 3D resin printer. The uh, CA glue here is uh, pretty much the only glue I use for these resin parts. Really make sure they adhere. And you really want to test fit everything before some of these parts can definitely warp um, in the curing process. And uh, you want to make sure you know, they fit before you start gluing them, with, uh, especially with the CA glue. And it went together really nicely. I, uh, I'm pretty new to 3D printing, so some of the pieces, uh, you know, I had to kind of make it work with some of the uh, fit there. You can see I'm, I'm missing some of the attachment points, but it, it really did go together very smoothly. The, the print itself was great. Any imperfections you see are my lack of uh, ability on the 3D printer. And there you go. Got uh, a really nice little artillery piece for a diorama or a wargaming. And I'm really happy with it. There we are. I'm, I'm starting off uh, the priming process. You can see with the uh, AK primer. I haven't really found a primer. Uh, that I'm really happy with. I'm trying a few right now. You can see with these resin prints, um, the color really absorbs into um, into the resin. Um, I might try sealing them at some point, but the results I think are fine. Um, it gave it a really nice matte finish in the end. Um, so I, I was pleased with that. I don't know that it's that necessary, but uh, here I'm just basically just going through um, the different olive drab paints you can see there uh, start with the darker coats and work my way up to lighter and lighter and kind of picking out all the details there that I think would you know would catch a little bit more light you know the middle parts of the barrel and the top of the shield there and gradually just use lighter and lighter paints in the airbrush to you know, kind of pull those details out. And this is the base coat here, so I think I missed that tread. <clears throat> but it's okay. So we go you now here's the the olive base color. And I'm just pulling out some of the lighter details there. color pull out all those highlights now here I'm using that same mixture I just poured it into the palette and I'm I'm just going through and hitting all the rivets or bolts. Anything that has that protruding edge, it gives it a really nice contrast, which will definitely be toned down. Here we're making uh, some chipping. These uh, mixes, I probably would have added a little bit more of the red there to give it a little bit more color instead of just such a dark gray it really didn't uh, it really didn't you really wouldn't have noticed the red in it so that's going to be the the darkest chips now we're making 
where the paint would have just been you know scraped away a little bit around those scratches and chips and this I ended up that that mixture is way too thin and I did end up going back through and adding a lot more paint because there's not much pigment in that and now we're just doing basic uh, chipping with a sponge this is such a such a nice way to get some real chips on there we're gonna go through with that first paint first you can see how thin that is and I do go I don't show that on camera but when it goes on here you can see that really nice contrast and there's a lot more pigment on that sponge and I just go through and I hit you know with it with something like this a piece of artillery that you know isn't in the real world you can be as aggressive as you want with this it's not like a, there's a historical photo of this piece so just any any part of it that might have gotten you know might get nicked or scratched or you know as it was trudging through the forest you know on a battlefield you could also add uh, scrapes with you know a thin paintbrush or um, you know bullet holes and things like that but I'm just going through here and I'm just hitting everything every exposed surface with scratches just to just to give it a little more visual interest and here we go with the that dark gray mixture and I'm just filling everything in so I just go back over everything that the sponge did and I, I leave a little bit of the lighter paint underneath so it just looks like that's been scraped away and you don't have to go crazy with this but it really it really adds a lot I think and a, a lot of this I practice on the lower parts of the of vehicles especially tanks where if you're gonna put uh, you know dust and, and mud all in there you know a lot of that will end up getting covered so practice down there and then you'll end up uh, for these more exposed parts that will remain a lot cleaner you can uh, really fine-tune it there and here I'm just uh, I have applied some decals these are just uh, standard Imperial Guard decals that I found in the fits bin I just put it on there to tell a little bit more of the story and here we are with the the oil washes oil paints I, I really like using oil paints I think they're I like the blendability of them I know they can be a little shiny that's why I put them on this cardboard and I let them uh, let the oils kind of you know wick out of them you can kind of see there on the cardboard that some of the uh, oils have come out now I've just made I just I just work on the palette and I start with you know just a light I, I like to build up so I you can see I'm, I'm grabbing more and more of the paint and I'm dragging it into the mineral spirits to to just build that color up I'd rather start with too little than too much um, but oil paints again are so forgiving um, you could really drench it and then go back in there with a, a clean brush um, and, and pull a lot of that pigment off the parts where you don't want it but I just think this gives it a lot of depth here again especially I'm not trying to match a specific color it's okay if it darkens it a little bit um, and you could always go back in you can see uh, all the other colors I have there you could go back through and pull some of that green back out if you thought it was too dark but I, I, I liked the the final result of this and you can see here now I'm going back through and I'm, I am cleaning up a lot of that and that's just a clean brush just as it, it it dries I like to let it sit there for a little bit and then kind of pull off the areas where I don't want it pooling and, and I, I, you can go through this process a few times with uh, lesser colors and build it up over time. Here I'm just adding some contrast to the, to the treads. I like this 
giving it a rusty look. And that's the end goal here. Um, and I start with this light gray and I'm gonna blend that in. You'll see, we, we kind of just go through. It doesn't really, you don't have to do it in the middle like that, but I like having the the dark areas around the tread where they where they meet each other. So I try and pull out the center details here. And you can see now I'm just kind of stippling. You can see the difference there between the left side that's already been done and the right side that I'm working on. And just one final clean brush just to really blend that in just so it's not so harsh. And then we just go back over it with this wash and you can see I darken it up a lot more here so there's a lot more pigment in that and I just I just throw it on there and you can, you can see it gives this really nice look to the treads that look kind of rusty and grimy and again this this particular model is going to be in a lot of mud so I just wanted the areas that you would see to have some visual pop and just not look like the rest of it. And you can see there, I'm very happy with that result. And that's pretty much it for this phase of the build. I was really happy with how this ended, ended up. And um, in the next video, um, it's going to be on in a diorama. Um, and it's going to be covered in mud. So we'll do weathering and mud effects in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.